Hi everybody, so today let's continue talking about the radial meniscal tears, how we can see the radial tears on the MRI of the knee. And just to uh, remind you, the, partial, the, the radial tear can be partial, well, okay, when it not compromise all the extension of the meniscus in the short axis, or it can be complete when it compromises all the length, all the extension of the meniscus in the short axis. And that's important, right? That's imp it's important to do this distinction between partial tears and complete tears in our reports on the MRI because the partial tears, they tend to have a, to present a, a more benign behavior than the complete tears and the treatment may vary because of that. Okay, so uh, what are the signs of radial tear? How, how, what are the signs that we can see on the MRI of the knee? One of the signs, we have two classic signs, okay? The first one is the cleft sign. That is the, the sign that we will see uh, on the plane that is perpendicular to the radial tear. The second sign, it's a famous one, right? It's the ghost sign that's parallel to the plane of the tear. And for example, in case of uh, complete tear, we don't see the meniscus or the ghost signs complete. You don't see the meniscus in case of complete tear. And in case of partial tears, we don't see the inner portion of the meniscus where the meniscus is truncated uh, or the meniscus is rounded, right? And so we see that in case of partial tears. So that's another thing. Uh, the These two signs of radial tears the extension of this, the signs, they will vary depending on uh, the size or the type of uh, the radial tear, if it's complete or if it's partial. And so here, let's see uh, a little bit more uh, in this scheme here, how we can see the, the radial tear, the complete type of the radial tear on the MRI of the knee. So when we, let's say here, Let's go back a little bit. Here we have, let's say, a tear, a radial tear, a complete radial tear uh, at the meniscal body. Uh, so uh, in the slices, that in the plane that is parallel to the meniscal tear, that's the plane that we see the ghost sign. In, in this case, it's like say it's a full ghost sign because we, we can't see any portion of the meniscus in the plane of the tear in the exactly place of the tear we don't see the meniscus so we see a, the meniscus with low signal intensity in one slice uh, after in one slice before uh, one slice before and, and one slice after but we don't see in one of the planes we don't see the meniscus at all so that's the full ghost sign and we see this image uh, in the plane that's parallel to the radial tear. So for the meniscal body, the plane that's parallel to the radial tear is the coronal. If it were in the anterior horn or the posterior horn, the plane that's parallel, it will be the sagittal plane. Okay, so now let's talk about the second sign of the of radial tears. And the second sign is the sign that we see in the plane that's perpendicular to the radial tear. That is the cleft sign. So we see the cleft sign in the plane that's perpendicular to the radial tear. So we can see the cleft here, the cleft here, the cleft here, and the cleft, it extends uh, through uh, all the images uh, that where we can see the meniscus, okay? So that's a complete cleft sign. So here is the, the full ghost sign in the plane that's parallel to the radial tear, the cleft sign that's perpendicular on the plane that's perpendicular to the to the radial meniscal tear and one thing that's very important about the radial tear is this the axial plane is very helpful to analyze the radial tear so always look uh, the tear on the axial plane always look at the axial plane because it will help you a lot all the three planes are important to analyze the radial tear okay so that's the good news about the radial tears. About the about the horizontal tears, the radial tear, the axial plane is not good to analyze the horizontal tears. Uh, about the longitudinal vertical tear, the plane the plane that passes 
through the same plane of the tear. It's not good to analyze the tear, but for the radial tear, all the three planes matter. So keep that in mind. So here, let's show, I'm, I'm gonna show an example of a radial tear, a complete radial tear. So this is the lateral meniscus. And here is the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus. This is the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. Here is the fibula, and we can see we can see here is the meniscal body, meniscal body, and we can see the meniscus here, low signal intensity, a triangular structure, and in this area here, uh, at the meniscal body, we cannot see the meniscus. Instead of a low signal structure, we are seeing a high signal image here, and that's the ghost sign. Look, we can see the ghost sign in this slice right here, and this slice right here, and here the meniscus, it starts to appear again. So we can see the ghost sign in two slices here because it's a huge radial tear. The fragments, they are, uh, they are not just opposed the uh, there is a distance between the two meniscal fragments so that's why we can see the full ghost the, the ghost sign in two almost in three images in this case here so this is the plane that is parallel to the radial tear right here is the full cleft sign so now we jumped from the plane that were uh, that was parallel to the radial tear, and now we are seeing, uh, we are analyzing the plane that is perpendicular to the radial tear in this case, that is located in the meniscal uh, meniscal body. So here's the full cleft sign, okay, or the cleft sign. One portion of the meniscus is here. One portion of the meniscus is here. One in the other portion of the meniscus, the other, let's say, the other meniscal fragment, it's here. So that's the distance of the radial tear in this case. And that's why we can see the full ghost sign or the ghost sign in two slices because the distance between the meniscal uh, stumps, uh, it's, it, it's big. So that's why I can see the ghost sign in two, almost in three cuts, in three slices in this case here. On the axial plane, Look at here, look here. It's very, it's a very good plane to identify the axial, the, the radial tear. Look here, the stumps or the margins of the meniscal tears. We can identify both margins of the meniscus that the rupture is all this area right here. We can measure this, the, the, the length of the tear right here. So the axial plane, it's very useful to analyze the radial tears. So that's a good thing about the radial tears, uh, speaking about the evaluation on the MRI. All the three planes are helpful. So use everything that you have, that you got to, to analyze and to help you to report this type of tear. And now, uh, this is one last case that I'd like to show you in this video. Um, it's a radial tear in a specific place in the posterior, in the posterior root ligament of the medial meniscus. So this is a root ligament tear. Uh, it's this is a a, a classic tear, uh, degenerative tear. Uh, I'm gonna talk more about that in the video about the root ligament tears. But here we can also see this pattern of the radial meniscal tear. So here we can see the posterior horn of the medial meniscus, and here we can't see the, the, the junction between the posterior horn of the medial meniscus and the root ligament that we can see one part of the root ligament here. And here is the radial tear of the posterior root ligament of the medial meniscus. Uh, here in the cor coronal plane, we can see this area where uh, there isn't uh, any portion of the meniscus. So here is it works like a cleft sign on the coronal plane, right? And on the axial plane, we can see the tear right here. So here is the area of the uh, posterior root ligament tear of the middle meniscus. In this case, uh, it's a radial tear that is compromising this region right here. Okay, so that's it for this video. I, I still have 
to go over the partial meniscal tears and some other uh, tips that I'd like to give you in radial tears that occur in the curved areas of the meniscus. But I will add this for another video. Um, that's it for now. Uh, thank for your attention. Have a great day. Uh, until the next video.